What if we pictured Greece, not by its acclaimed physical features, mountains, rivers, and scenic islands, as well as its glorious ancient past, but by its contemporary experiences in receiving immigrant populations? The map of Greece that emerges from this chapter is one full of rivers of dead bodies, mountains where people lose their way to freedom, and prison islands where the loss of dignity overpowers hope. Despite sustained media and political interest in Greece as a key site of European border security and several disturbing accounts about life in the country's reception and refugee facilities, there is limited interest in life inside Greek detention centres. Yet detention spaces have their roots in the early 1990s. Since then, the country has followed a series of practices based on deterrence, invisibilization, and exhaustion. Following the mass arrival of large numbers of migrants in the 1990s, Greece sought to secure the country's borders and deter new arrivals through a system of preemptive and improvised measures, including illegal pushbacks which, over the years, became routine, systematic, and brutal. As a Greek border police officer told us, in the past we were more effective. The Greek government used to hire fishermen at the border to illegally transfer migrants back to Turkey. It is estimated that these practices have affected thousands of people, and yet authorities and key actors in the operations continue to deny their existence and evade responsibilities. In Evros, ad hoc facilities, mainly repurposed wheat warehouses, have been used over the years as spaces for detention. As a high official who served at the border has described it to us, in the past there were no reception or detention centers, just camps covered by a fence. We would dig up big holes in the ground and that would serve as a toilet. In practice, people arrested crossing the border were detained for indeterminate periods in facilities re resembling human dumps. Most importantly, these facilities could hardly be described as official detention centers. Following a wide range of damning critiques and with significant EU funding, the authorities started building the detention infrastructure, increased Frontex operations, and enhanced border patrols through new technological means and more personnel. Those who managed to reach Greece were arrested and detained at the borders. Invisibilization was another weapon of border control. In fact, as attested by a number of human rights organizations' reports, it was not unusual for apprehensions in the border region to go unrecorded, making official figures of arrivals show only the tip of the iceberg. Research has also uncovered semi-official places, like the Poros facility, which has been employed as unofficial detention prior to pushbacks, given the complete absence of any registration of detention. In the lead-up to the May and June 2012 national elections, immigration detention and border control more generally were deployed as a cynical political tool to demonstrate the government's determination to salvage Greek national pride. Αυτό το επιδιώξαμε για κράτηση παραπάνω και δεν είναι το όμως το πάρα πολύ σημαντικό και το κάνουμε και ήταν στο σενιά μήνες και μετά το πήραμε στο δεκαετικό μήνες και αυτό όμως πρέπει να τους κάνουμε το βίο αβίωτο. A snapshot of any detention center at the time would show overcrowding so high that often detainees had to sleep in shifts. Access to border facilities in northern Greece, for example, required walking over bodies as every square centimeter of floor space was occupied. Lack of ventilation, limited sanitation, and poor hygiene are but some of the serious deficiencies that the Greek imitation detention facilities were facing. Detained persons often complained about the challenge of keeping themselves clean as soap and shampoo were either not provided or in limited quantities, making conditions in overcrowded situations dirty and malodorous. The absence of hygiene items meant that detainees often had to stay in the same clothes for months. In many facilities, there was only one functioning toilet and one shower, usually for more than 100 people. Due to poor maintenance, toilets were often blocked 
and the sanitary facilities were flooded with water, sewage, and feces, which overflowed into the sleeping areas. Detainees were only rarely able to access outdoor spaces or medical services. The vast majority of detained persons did not have any information regarding their detention, nor any understanding of their legal status. The warehousing and deliberately exhausting policy could also shed light on one of the main characteristics of the detention system, the scale of the problem of ill treatment by law enforcement officials. Violence by the police is routine, systematic, and cloaked in a climate of impunity. Over the years, there have indeed been a large number of allegations of ill treatment. Most of the allegations described violent acts, such as slaps, punches, kicks, and blows with batons and baseball bats, as well as electric shocks. Recorded complaints, court proceedings, or videos of abuse which have managed to receive media attention do not reveal the extent of the problem. Human rights organizations and monitoring bodies have highlighted that migrants often feared they would be subjected to further ill treatment if they submitted any complaints. When charges of abuse were investigated by the authorities, the procedures were marred by many flaws, including the lack of promptness and expeditiousness in carrying out investigations, compounded by the fact that there was no adequately resourced police inspectorate. Despite the sheer number of allegations of abuse and their consistency, successive Greek governments have failed to acknowledge the scale and systemic nature of human rights violations by law enforcement officials and entrenched impunity. The effects of inhumane treatment and uncertainty over the future are not lost on immigrants and refugees detained throughout Greece. In remote places, behind wire and under constant surveillance, forms of resistance flourish. Resistance is fierce, flexible, and adapts to circumstances, all with a purpose of freedom. It is only through these challenges that we can hope that there will be no more places where people can be hidden away and tortured on Greek soil. Freedom! Freedom!